Hey Grace family, my name is Eric Northrup and I'm excited to share with you what I believe is a secret to loving all people. And to start, we're going to look at Genesis 16. It's the story of Sarai and Hagar. There's a few things you need to know about these two ladies. One is that Sarai is Abram or Abraham's wife. Um, you might have heard of him. He's a founder of many nations. He's known in the Bible as the, the man of faith. And God delighted in him uh, and loved him and appeared to him uh, one night and said, Hey, Abram, I want you to look at the stars of the sky and I'm going to bless you with uh, numerous descendants that will outnumber those stars. And that's going to happen through your marriage with Sarai. And so there was one problem. Sarai was barren. Sarai couldn't have kids. And what makes matters worse is she was getting older and older um, making that hope or that dream diminish. So she had this great idea uh, apart from God, which means it was a really bad idea. But she went to Abram and said, Abram, I want you to sleep with my Egyptian slave girl, uh, Hagar. Um, and then from there, you can conceive and have a child. Um, so Abram complied and Hagar was with a child. And through hearing that news, Sarai and Hagar's relationship deteriorated. Um, it was disastrous. Um, we see in scripture that Sarai was very jealous against Hagar. Uh, she was filled with contempt and anger. She treated Hagar harshly. Hagar, for fear of her life, fled her mistress uh, and went to the desert. So she's isolated, um, she's scared, um, and she's alone, um, not knowing what's going to happen. And that's where we see God show up in our life. It's found in uh, Genesis 16, 12, or 16, 10. We'll start there. It says this, The angel of the Lord said to her, I will surely multiply your offspring so that they cannot be numbered for multitude. And the angel of the Lord said to her, Behold, you are pregnant, and you shall bear a son. You shall call his name Ishmael, because the Lord has listened and heard you in your affliction. And then we see that Hagar gives a name of God. It's in verse 13. So she called the name of the Lord who spoke to her, You are a God of seeing, or it's also known as El Rahi. It's E L R O I, and it literally means the God who sees me. And I love this story in scripture because there's this lie in our culture that God is some distant, far off God doing his own thing. And he uh, is separated from his creation. He wants nothing to do from his creation. And that's the furthest thing from the truth. God wants an intimate relationship with you, with I, with Hagar. And so he sees her in her affliction and he engages her where she's at promising to deliver and, and have a great future for her. Fast forward to the New Testament, we see God in the flesh, Jesus Christ. And Jesus interacted with many people and he taught us how to have a real relationship, an authentic relationship with God, who he really is. Um, and one of the things that I love about Jesus as he encounters people is very similar to Genesis 16. He sees people and he engages where they're at. Here's a few examples. One, Jesus is walking in the crowd and he sees a man in a sycamore tree, right? It's Zacchaeus and he calls him by name. Zacchaeus, get down. Zacchaeus comes down and in front of everyone he says, Tonight I will dine with you. Another story is a woman um, who is bleeding most of her life and Jesus is on this way to heal this prominent official's daughter, Jairus' daughter. And this woman had the audacity, this courage to touch the hem of the cloak uh, because she thought that that would heal me. And so she touched the cloak and Jesus turned around and uh, locked eyes with her and decided to, in that moment of rushing to Jairus' daughter, to just listen and hear her story in the midst of the, the huge crowd. We also see Jesus' compassion for the large crowds. Uh, there's many that followed, hundreds, thousands of people that wanted to just get a glimpse of Jesus. And we see of his heart of when he saw the crowds, it says that he had pity and compassion on them. They were like a sheep without a shepherd. 
So he decided to feed them. He engaged them where they're at and loved them um, as they followed him. And so why is this so hard for us as believers? Um, and I think one of the main things is it's this reality of we're so caught up in our own lives, in our own agendas, our own exhaustive to-do lists, um, desires, our passions, or um, where we want to get in life that we miss seeing people as God sees them. So I believe that the secret to loving all people is this, to slow down and to see people as God sees them. And, and you got to pray. you got to ask the Holy Spirit that lives inside of us to give us uh, a heart to see the inner person. And so when we're with an annoying person or when we're with our colleagues from work or our own family, I would encourage you to slow down and to pray to the Holy Spirit to give you eyes, to give you a heart to love as He loves. And so what this looks like is you could be engaging in conversation and just pray over someone. Um, pray over as you're talking. Uh, pray scripture. Um, pray salvation for them. Pray that they would know the amazing love of Jesus and stop focusing on how they just annoy you but focus on the Father's love for them. And this could go for anybody, not just someone who annoys you, but for your own family, your, your spouse, your kids, um, you know, the people that you work with. But it takes, you got to slow down and you got to stop and get out of your own agenda and really hone in of what God is doing. He wants to work through us. I believe that wholeheartedly. It's all through Scripture but he's going to do that when we die to ourselves, we take up a cross, and we follow him. So church, I'll leave you with this. It's in Philippians 2, and it's Paul's kind of heart of how to consider others before yourself. It says this, Do nothing from selfish ambition or vain conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourselves. Let each of you look not only to your own interests, but also to the interests of others. Have this a mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped. But he emptied himself by taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men. And he became obedient to death, even death on a cross. So, church... I would encourage you to consider others more than yourselves and realize that the, the Holy Spirit indwells in you and ask Him to show you, who do I need to see today? Who do I need to engage? And you will be used by God for His glory and our good. God bless.